I've got to tell you guys, I think Saturday was the single best Saturday of the entire college football season for the majority of the handicappers here at the site as they hit one big play after another. And most of those major wager releases you got for over half price off thanks to various discount coupon codes. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, and this is going to be your Sunday video report. I know myself yesterday, not only did I win my top-rated 15-dime best bet with my SEC Game of the Year selection with LSU cashing in and revenge at home with a double-digit blowout easily rolling by Ole Miss. But here on the video report, hitting three out of four complimentary plays as I gave you winners on Alabama. How about Louisville? How about Louisville just destroying NC State? Did I not tell you that one of the two factors you always have to be so leery about when it comes to handicapping and gambling and college football and college basketball is the letdown? And NC State certainly was in that letdown situation after having a victory at Clemson slip from within their grasp a week earlier. And it showed as they got drubbed in Louisville yesterday by the Cardinals. And then, of course, the other complimentary play, I told you there was no way Navy should have been a home dog against a bad Memphis team. And the midshipmen showed you why with the double digit win at home getting one to one and a half points. So three out of four yesterday with the video freebies in the NFL. You know, I am 17, uh, 17, six and one with my NFL freebies so far this season. I have three more complimentary plays coming your way in just a moment. A couple of quick reminders for you. First of all, today I am going to repeat the money saving discount coupon code. That is the single biggest discount of the entire football season. So again, Today, you can save 28% on your total purchase price by using coupon code 28%, 2E28PERCENT. Say it after me, 28PERCENT, 28%. This is the single biggest discount code that I will provide of the entire football season. Now, I made it available yesterday. I'm repeating it today because, listen, guys, I know a lot of you won a lot of money yesterday. And today you want to take advantage, perhaps lock in with a particular handicapper. So why not save the maximum that you can? This is a beautiful thing. It's a mix and match coupon for those of you that are newcomers. So that means you can use it for any combination of handicappers, picks, and or packages. The only stipulation is you've got to put everything in your shopping cart at one time for one single purchase. So you can't come in and buy Brad Wilton's latest 150 dime uh, raise the bar release and then hours later come in and buy Steve Boone's Cali Cartel's uh, four straight Sunday night game of the year winner. No, everything in your shopping cart at one time. But the other neat thing about this is if you happen to have a long term package, let's say you have a 60 day package with Trace Adams that only has 12 days left. And you want to extend it out another 60 days because he made you more money yesterday with yet another double your wager winner with uh, what West Virginia crushing TCU. Well, guys, you can extend that package outward, and if you have an instant rebate, that is applicable as well. Should you ever have any questions, you can always contact customer service. Again, today is the last day, and as I always like to tell you guys, the packages of these handicappers here at the site, they cost the same today as they did yesterday, as they did two weeks ago. Nothing's changed. So your savings are always maximized. I don't play those type of games. Speaking of some of the big discounted plays here today, Props going out to Trace Adams, as I told you, another double wager winner yesterday as he scored with West Virginia. I got to tell you, I didn't think West Virginia was that good. But, you know, West Virginia going on the road and taking care of business in Lubbock against Texas Tech. Well, as we saw again yesterday, Red Raiders played absolutely no defense. But uh, then taking care of business at home against a decent, I thought, TCU team. But they manhandled them yesterday. So props going out to him today. His biggest NFL play of the season, 2,000 star W wager winner, number 46 out of 70, but five in a row. It's on the Falcons and the Chargers. And again, just like yesterday, you get it for over half price off by using coupon code double wager. Uh, Brad Wilton, I mentioned him uh, today. Normally, 100 dime play, like his. Um, Oh, God, uh, like his 100-dime winner on the Packers on Wednesday, his 100-dime winner on the uh, uh, Cubs uh, earlier this week. I think that was on uh, Wednesday night. Packers was on Thursday night. Today, 150-dime, raise the bar winner, number 24 out of 33 and 4 out of 5 in the NFL this season. His biggest NFL play of the season, in fact, 
his 2016 Dog of the Year. It goes at 1 o'clock Eastern time. It is the half price play of the day. All Brad Wilton has done is made $10 betters, a little over $34,000 over the past 15 months. You get it as the half price play of the day by using coupon code HALF, H-A-L-F. And as I quickly mentioned to you as well, Steve Boonin's Cali Cartel, they're going for NFL winner number 9 out of 12 this season. They're Sunday night game of the year, part number 4, Arizona and Seattle. You get it for over half price off. All your discount codes, coupons, etc. can be found over on the home page. Uh, let me start with your complimentary plays. Oh, oh, one more quick thing, guys. One more quick thing. Listen, a lot of you have taken my advice and gone ahead and uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel here, which you can do so if you happen to be watching video here today on the uh, internet or on the uh, web page by uh, scrolling down below underneath this week's countdown to kickoff show clicking through the link it'll bring you to the home page and that way you'll get a little notice which will tell you when the videos are posted the daily videos and the the weekly videos etc listen you know if you ever have a question about like the countdown to kickoff video um, you know you can use the YouTube channel to send me a message I can't guarantee you that I will always be there ASAP to instantly reply. I can't always guarantee you if I get overwhelmed with messages, I can get to all of them to reply. But like, for example, and this is how sad my life is, at uh, 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock this morning, a couple different guys were questioning whether or not LaShawn McCoy was going to be playing today for the Buffalo Bills because I talked about that game extensively in this week's Countdown to Kickoff program. Well, that program is recorded Tuesday morning, okay? Wednesday afternoon, he pulled up lame in practice with a hamstring injury. Well, you know, I took the time to respond to these guys. If you go to the YouTube channel, because they were able to use the channel to send me a text message, which you can see the public replies. Again, it's a great avenue to do so. So it's just another reason if you want to subscribe to the channel, you know, it gives you an avenue to send a message regarding the weekly shows, which are recorded so far in advance. It's just another avenue, again, if something if you're interested in doing. So let's talk about these complimentary plays. Uh, first game, let's talk about Atlanta and San Diego. Uh, you know, this line has come down earlier in the week. The Falcons were six and a half. You know, you can get the Falcons as cheap as five, five and a half. I would not advocate playing this game <laughs> uh, in terms of a side because I think the way to go is actually to play this game over. Here's the thing with the Falcons. I don't think they're for real, okay? And it would trouble me to play the Falcons. One of the stats that I quoted in this week's show, the Falcons are 2-9 and nine against the spread, their last 11 laying points. As a dog, they're money in the bank, 5-0 and oh this season, 9-1 and one in their last 10. Yet the public is jumping all over Atlanta, because, you know, they, I'm sorry, on San Diego, because this line is obviously dropped for good reason. Because the Chargers, of course, the last time we have seen them is because that was the Thursday night game two weeks ago when they upset the Broncos. But this, again, of course, is a Chargers team that has shown you repeatedly this season. They can play it close, but they fail down the stretch. But we just need close tonight. I think this is a field goal game. But at the same time, I look at the total in this game and I think, Why not simply just play it over? Does this put you in mind of a 17-14 game? I don't think so. Now, the total is up to 54.5 points, okay? Earlier in this week, it was 51.5 points. So the public has bet this total up, but again, for good reasons. Falcons do not have a pass rush. They only had 19 sacks last year. They had four sacks in the Denver upset win uh, when they won on the road a couple of weeks ago. But I think that was more because they were facing a rookie quarterback making his first start that held the ball too long. It was more a case of them getting coverage sacks against Pax and Lynch for Denver. They only have eight sacks, I think, on the season. They're just not a good aggressive team. They're not going to get to Phillip Rivers. He's got that quick release still, okay? Meanwhile, the Falcons' defense isn't that good, period. San Diego's defense? Do we have to even go there? Okay, so I think these teams are going to be able to put points on the board, I mean, I could easily see this being a 31-28 game. Again, I think the over is the way to go in this game. And the Falcons have shown you they are 5-1 and one over this year. Remember in game number one, Tampa and them, how they went over their lone loss of the year? I can see this one going over as well. So, again, I say go over in this contest. By the way, another reason I think the people are jumping on the Chargers in this game, keep in mind, Chargers 29-1 and one against the spread on the road as a dog. So I say, if you're going to play it, 
you play at San Diego plus the points. Otherwise, I think my personal complimentary play on this game is to go ahead and simply take the over in the contest. Next game, earlier on the board, Kansas City at home against New Orleans. Kansas City, a six and a half point favorite in this one. Let me just get you the latest uh, total in this game. Uh, this one is now sitting at, wow, only 51 and a half points. That really surprised me. The reason I say why is, wow, is that earlier in this week when we did the show, it was only 50, 50 and a half points. So we've only had an escalation of about a point and a half in terms of the total. Why not more? Again, does this game put you on mind of being a defensive battle? Saints are coming off a 41-38 home win against Carolina. They nearly blew a 21-0 lead in that game. They needed a 52-yard field goal with 11 seconds left uh, after blowing that 21-0 lead just to win it. Drew Brees, 34 for 49 in that contest, 446 yards, four touchdown passes. Saints moved the ball at will against a lousy Carolina defense, 8 for 16 on third downs, 523 yards in total offense. They won that game despite 10 penalties, 126 yards in that game. Meanwhile, Kansas City coming off a 26-10 win at Oakland, but hell, they always beat the Raiders. They always win at the Coliseum. Alex Smith in that game, 19 for 22, 220 four yards. He did it against the league's worst pass defense. An Oakland pass defense that was allowing opposing quarterbacks to complete 64.9% of their completions. Well, guess what, guys? Today, he's facing the number 30 pass defense. There's only 32 teams in the league. The Raiders were number 32. The Saints are number 30. So I think Alex Smith is going to have another big day here because the Saints are allowing opposing quarterbacks to complete 65.8% of their uh, passes this year. They only have nine sacks in five games. Opposing quarterbacks have thrown for an average of 301 yards per game. Meanwhile, Spencer Ware last week against the Raiders, 24 carries, career high 131 yards. He's really handling the bulk of the ball carrying duties as Jamal Charles is slowly working his way back into the offense. Kansas City had 406 total yards last week against Oakland on the road. 286 of them came on the uh, ground, okay? I'm sorry, 100 and, 183 of them came on the round. And their defense, which isn't great, and Oakland has a pretty potent offense, as we've seen this season, right? Oakland only had 286 yards in that game. Now, they're going to take on a Saints run defense. Run defense that's ranked number 26 in the league. Saints allow opposing ball carriers to average four yards a carry, 118 yards a game. I think they're going to have success again, softening up the Saints defense by running on them with Ware and Charles and then Smith just hitting them with those short to medium range passes. Now, the question you have to ask yourself in this game, can the Saints defensively stop Kansas City? I don't think so. But at the same time, Kansas and Kansas City stopped Drew Brees. Saint, uh, the Chiefs don't have a pass rush. They don't. They haven't been able to get the quarterbacks all season long. And the Saints have scored 32 points or more in four of their five games this season. There's a reason the Saints have gone over in 15 of their last 22 games. Um, I'd be hesitant about laying the points here with uh, Kansas City. I think that if you're going to play this particular game, I would probably grab the points with New Orleans, grab the six to six and a half points. After all, the Saints have covered nine of their last 12 as a road dog, including all both games this season. Uh, meanwhile, the Chiefs have failed to cover in each of their last seven games after playing the Raiders. Is that a statistical anomaly? I think so. It's not like they're real big physical games, not like in years gone by where people used to say, hey, you know, there was that great stat in many years gone by where after your teams played the Steelers, they really struggled because the Steelers beat them up. They were real physical games. I think here, I mean, Raiders, physical team, not really. But instead, I think that this is a great opportunity, just another game, play the over. 51 and a half points. So again, I lean a little toward the Saints plus the six and a half points. In that case, I'd go ahead and buy the half point up to seven if you're going to look that way. But I think instead I would rather play the over at 51 and a half points and look for another barn burner, 34-31 in this game as well. So your final game is going to come down to my Philadelphia Eagles, who my success in picking against them or on them lately has abandoned me the last couple of weeks. But listen, the Eagles are a three-point home dog against the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are coming off a bye. 
you were always faced with the possibility that the Vikings could lay an egg coming off a bye like the Eagles did a couple of weeks ago when they were coming off their bye 3-0 and and just simply failed to slip, show up. Uh, they didn't take their no-dos before coming out for that first half against Detroit. I just don't anticipate the Vikings having that problem today at Philadelphia. I, I just look at this Vikings team, and they are for real defensively. Their front seven, nobody in particular that's a standout, but my God, are they a solid team. And I look at that Eagles offensive line, how with Lane Johnson, their starting right tackle, who is now serving game number two of that 10-game suspension for PED violation, with him out, that has just ruined the Eagles' front five. That offensive line, you saw how they could not stop the Washington Redskins last week. The Eagles are starting a rookie who saw his first game action in the NFL last week against Washington. The Redskins feasted on this guy. Don't ask me his name. I can't pronounce it. They feasted on him at right tackle. Boom. He was responsible for two and a half sacks of Carson Wentz, who went down five times. Eagles love to run those two to three tight end sets. Well, often they had to keep one of the tight ends in as an extra blocker. The center for the Eagles had a miserable game, Kelsey, last week for against Washington. The Redskins had five sacks. I think Mike Zimmer and that defense, they're going to overflow the gaps, the A gaps, and they're going to come charging at Carson Wentz. And Wentz is going to look at a secondary that is a hell of a lot better than anything he saw in Washington. And remember, the Eagles do not have wide receivers that can get separation. And if you got to keep one of your tight ends, which is the strength of that Philadelphia team in as an extra blocker, well, that's really going to hurt your passing game. Meanwhile, the Eagles are going to look to get pressure on Sam Bradford. Well, that's fine to say that you are, but listen, you couldn't get to Kirk Cousins last week. You had zero sacks. Sam Bradford has that quick release. The Eagles know. He used to be their starting quarterback, right? And he's got wide receivers that are fast and speedy and can get separation. Ask the Packers. Remember what they did to them in that Monday night game in week number two? The other thing is that Bradford's going to be able to pick apart an Eagles secondary, which is still just as suspect as it's been the past couple years. Now, the Vikings have no ground game, but the Redskins have no ground game either. And look at what they did last week, running at will, 230 yards, averaging seven yards a carry against the Eagles. Why? Because the Eagles play that 4-3 defense with a wide nine formation. Wide nine formation They use it because it's supposed to generate a pass rush without blitzing. Zero sacks against Kirk Cousins last week, though, unfortunately, right, if you're an Eagles fan. But it also leaves you exposed to the run. Same problem the Eagles had a couple of years ago when they had Jim Washburn as their defensive coordinator, and he had the wide nine. Guess what? Jim Schwartz is a Jim Washburn disciple, and Jim Schwartz is the Eagles defense coordinator now. Vikings haven't been able to run with Adrian Peterson out, but who knows? Maybe today they find enough holes. I still think Minnesota is the play here. Minus the three points. Again, I would go ahead and buy down the half point in this situation. So I'm going to go with the Vikings. I'm going to take the games between the Saints and the Chiefs and the Chargers and the Falcons to both go over. And I do lean, to be honest with you, with the underdog in both of those situations. I would have taken the Bills today if I knew for sure Shady McCoy would be carrying the ball 20 times for 120 yards today. But since that's a big, big question mark, that's a stay away game for me. Good luck, everybody. I'll talk to you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.